Right guys, what is going on? Buster Barnes here, bringing you episode number 3 of season 3 in our FIFA 21 West Ham career mode. Last episode we did pick up some big wins against Manchester City. We won the Super Cup against FC Barcelona. Calvert-Lewin, as you can see, having his part to play. Six goals in the league already in three games. Looks like he's continuing his form just fine. Us, Manchester United, Arsenal and Liverpool all joined at the top, winning all three of our games but you know that could change we do up next have Tottenham Hotspur now the reason that I haven't actually skipped forward to that game is because we did in fact get an offer for one and only um, Thomas Suchek which we will be able to see here and um, it was for 100.9 million from Olympic Lyon and I did a lot of thinking guys and I'm thinking that I might just be selling him. But before we get into that bombshell, please, as you guys do, please leave a like if you enjoy this series. And as always, leave a comment down below of what you want to see me do. We're obviously nearing the end of this transfer window, but we've still got the January transfer window before this series does end. I mean, if we don't win the Champions League, we might come back for Series 4, like I have said previously. As always, guys, do subscribe to show your support to the channel as well. But I think what this rides on is really how much we can get for Suchek. It says that we should be looking between 130 and 190 million, but I don't really know how much money someone like Leon will actually have. Um, but if we actually go on to here, I have made a short list of players that I am looking to replace him with if we can. So sell him, obviously, all centre mids. Now, none of these guys are actually rated as high or higher than Suchek. But Suchek, just as you guys know, I've had a iffy relationship with him. I don't think he's the best type of player. His strengths maybe don't cater as much towards this team. I want to play a 4-3-3. I have Rice as the holding DM. I mean, maybe you could argue for a case that I move Suchek to that DM and get rid of Rice. But I do quite like Declan Rice. You know, he is the West Ham captain. He's West Ham um, through and through. So that sort of makes me want to keep him a bit more. Suchek does have five-star weak foot, which is useful. But I can always up it on any of these players to be fair. I mean, sometimes I'm a four star, which isn't too bad. Um, and another strength Sujek has is his, you know, heading. He's good in the air. But our midfield's already quite good in the air with Loftus, Sheik and Rice. And also, the way I take corners, my corners pretty much always fall near post to whoever the striker is. So Sujek's not really getting his head on those anyway, to be fair to him. But when I was looking up and down these players, there were a few that did stick out for me. Now, if you look at some of the values of these players, it does look like that some of them are maybe less likely to get than others, like Valverde maybe seems a bit unlikely. An interesting one is Alwa, who um, is from Olympic Lyon, who did offer the money for um, Suchek. So there is a chance that I could actually ask for him plus some money. And he does look like a nice player, but there's other good players as well, like Milinkovic Savic, like um, La Celso as well, which would be very interesting. Obviously, um, Goretzka and La Celso from Spurs, and um, you know, would be very interesting if we could weaken um, that Spurs side. Actually, we will be just going out and facing, so that'd be pretty crazy if they had their first start against their former club. But I mean, it doesn't matter unless we do, in fact, um, sell Suchek. So let's get to that and let's actually try and sell him and um, see what um, Olympic Leon are saying. Now, this is a bit scary because I don't want them to storm out of the offer. But, you know, Suchek is worth £114 million, And at the end of the day, you know, um, they're saying that we could maybe ask for something more. So, hmm, I'm a bit interested. Should I just go for a swap for our one? I don't know if he's necessarily the one that I want 100% though. So, if I propose a new transfer fee straight up, maybe for... Hmm, I don't want them to storm out. So, it's £145 million, maybe. That could just get them to storm out, though. But I'm not too sure, guys. But shall we try I mean, if we're going to go all out, we may as well just see you at 150 and see what they actually say to that. If I submit the offer, what are they going to say? We certainly want to sign Suchek. That's the best they can offer. Hmm. See, I'm not too sure if Alwar's the player that I want. Because I could, the thing is, I could get more money out of this by, you know, by asking for Alwar plus, like, you know, whatever, plus, like, 70 million. 
Which, to be fair, I think it's a good deal if I did get that. So, shall we do a player swap? Um, midfielders. Our, so 69 million. Proposed new transfer fee. If we go for our plus... 75 million. <laughs> God, if they accept this, that would be absolutely mental. Submit the offer there. What are they are going to say? Look, we're keen to sign but this is too much willing to pay for here. Unfortunately, we aren't interested in swapping players. Hmm. You know what, I say we hold off, I say we reject it and hold off guys. We can get more for Suchek, I don't think it's worth just selling him like that. Garcia, we have a few um, offers for him. He is our sub centre back. Maybe we'd think of selling him if um, other clubs did in fact, um, you know, come. Or, you know, we did actually get the Suchek money. But I tell you what, if I go to the squad hub it's, and transfer list someone like Suchek, maybe we should have done that before, to be fair. Um, oh, it's annoying how you can't um, actually get rid of players like that. I've actually gone right past them. Sue checks there. If I add him to the transfer list, let's see if there's any other clubs that come in for him and offer a bit more money. Okay, guys. So our Champions League group has, in fact, been decided. We're in Group G. And um, we're actually up against Juventus, or Piemonte Galcio, as they are called in this game. Hertha Berlin and CSKA Moscow. So, not actually the easiest group. Um, and Dombele, who we were looking at, actually does play for Hertha Berlin. Maybe that could be a reason to go after him. But, you know, Juventus, that is not an easy group, to say the least. We will have a look at the other groups. Real Madrid have a pretty um, easy group for them. That's a bit of a tougher group, the one that Liverpool have City with Atletico Madrid, Dortmund Sevilla, that's sort of the middling ground group, Bayern, PSG, Ajax, that is um, a pretty tough group, Spurs have got Napoli and Monaco, we are obviously there, Barcelona with Atalanta, so there's actually, it seemed like there was a few bigger teams that are actually missing out there, but as you can see guys, our game against Spurs is next, it will just be the normal starting team, this will be the team that I will be starting for that game, let's hope that we can get all three points. So this is the Spurs team. Going to be a big thing if we can beat them. Obviously, they have the Celso and Goretzka, two guys that we're actually looking at. So I guess we can have a bit more of an up-close and personal scout of how good they'll be. Obviously, Suchek, if he impresses me in this game and maybe the next one, maybe there's a chance that he could stay in the team. So, I mean, you know, and obviously if no one comes in for him, he'll have to stay. So this could be his chance to try and impress me and um, if he really does want to stay at the club. But um, a game that we should hopefully win at home. Um, to be honest, our games against Spurs have gone really one or two ways. They're actually, I think, our first ever win in this career mode series. But um, then since then, they've been uh, pretty much um, putting the uh, battering to us. So um, hopefully that's not going to be repeated for this game. As they have some even more new players. Albert Busquets trying to turn themselves into Barcelona and Titi too. Lewin can Calvert-Lewin knock that over to Ferran Torres, he can, Ferran Torres down to Suchek, Suchek's Calvert-Lewin, Calvert-Lewin going to try and pass it on the inside, he's still got the ball, he shoots, and forces the big save for Lloris, the defending there a little bit sketchy, maybe I could have put that through to whoever was making the run, but I mean I don't know who that was, and Titi I think loses out, and um, Calvert-Lewin forces a big save from Hugo Lloris, but this is what I'm on about in the corners guys, I don't even know if Suchek's actually up there, that might be him at the far post, but either way, it's going to fall to Calvert-Lewin, he's going to get a lot of power on it, but unfortunately to no avail, but a decent start from us. Can Kabak get rid of it? He can, or he can't, and they've shot, and oh my god, how has the so missed that? He is left-footed, and you know, that was something I was looking at, he doesn't have the five-star weak foot, and he's just put it wide, oh my god, just says Ferran Torres on the inside to Calvert-Lewin, Calvert-Lewin down to Suchek, Suchek with the pass to Loftus-Cheek, Loftus-Cheek to Saar, Saar's going to knock that through to, uh, to Calvert-Lewin, now back to Saar again, now Saar back to Calvert-Lewin again, can he pass it on the inside, he can, and who is that, it is Ferran Torres going on the inside, and that is us 1-0, I've you know had to go at Calvert-Lewin's passing before, but that was a really nice pass he picked out into the box, Ferran Torres made the space, 
And it's nice to see him scoring, you know, he is one of our big signings this summer, so it's nice to see him get on the score sheet. Just one on one there, what a finish that was, rifled that into the corner, gave Lloris no chance as Alderweireld tried to, that's not Alderweireld, what I'm on about, that's Doherty. Um, yeah, Mourinho not too happy, we are 1-0 up against Spurs, but we've been 1-0 up against them before, so need to still be cautious. But we're going to try and push them back as Jordi Alba goes through. We can't make the challenge as Kane goes through. He shoots and that's very disappointing. I think, I don't know if Lunin should have made the save there. It didn't seem like the ball was hit with the most power, but it was just the precision. And oh, why didn't, that was just bad defending for me yet again. There's just a gap that's made and I should have tried to cut through with Emerson, but I didn't swap player. And um, that's just made Kane score his third goal of the season. It's not Calvert-Lewin though, is it? And like I said, guys, try not to concede before half-time. We actually concede literally on the flipping minutes. So that's not good enough. Suchek there trying to um, maybe show why he should be staying. He hasn't maybe done it yet. But, you know, a good goal from Ferran Torres. We can score against this Spurs side. So let's try and do it again. Suchek pops that through to Loftus-Cheek. Loftus-Cheek now. Over to Saar. Saar through to Calvert-Lewin. Can Calvert-Lewin pop that through to Suchek? Suchek! And he hasn't done it, but wait a minute. It's his Ismaila Saar. And is that offside? I don't think it is. 2-1 to us. And, I mean, Suchek, he didn't put the ball away. And he's, you know, struggled with that before. But, you know, still played the big part when he did get the rebound. Over to Ismaila Saar. Maybe a bit lucky. But what a way to um, react. Pretty, you know, fairly shortly in in-game minutes after Spurs scored. We put the ball away. Saar had to be quick on his feet. Had an open net. Put it away. And then um, that is good to see. Spurs defenders almost getting there. But just were not quick enough. Alba, not quick enough. The Barcelona duo of him and um, Umtiti could not be enough. And we're 2-1 up. Now let's not try and concede another against Declan Rice on the wing, doesn't have the agility to turn properly, but Kane, knocking him on out, Suchek now has to defend against Doherty, can Suchek get the ball off him, he's, he's doing well here, but no, Doherty's still going to get the ball in, but that's going to go to Lunin, I thought, but Suchek, that is where he's good at, in the air, um, I thought that was going to go to him, Torres through to Calvert-Lewin, not really what I was thinking of doing, but it doesn't matter, as lot of cheek puts through is made a and this could be a very big chance. He's against Jordi Alba though, which um, isn't as nice. But he's through there. Pass through to Loftus Cheek. Pass to. Ah, oh, I thought that was going to be a really nice goal, but the final pass just wasn't there. To be fair, I don't think it was a great decision by me as Doherty goes through against Alba, who's lost the ball. Has Alba. Through to Calvert Lewin. Through to Suchek. And Suchek rifles it in the back of the net for 3 1. And I'll tell you what, I said I was going to sell him, guys. And. I do think if I get a big offer, I probably still will. But, I mean, Suchik just showing how it's not he's not letting it phase him. He's being a professional. And what a finish that was against Spurs. Really nice play. Another assist for Calvert-Lewin, I think. Um, just really, like, proving me wrong about his link-up play in this game. And um, Lloris not too happy. Um, not actually their captain anymore. You'd think he'd still be captain. But that's Suchik's first goal of the season. And 75th minute, 3-1 up against Spurs, I think. That's just going to call for me to make some substitutions. Why not? We're going to bring on Gilmore for Loftus Cheek. We're going to bring on, um, not him, we're going to bring on Jeremy Boga for Torres. And I think we're probably going to bring on Ampadu for Rice um, just to get Ampadu some minutes. Maybe boost his overall up a little bit more. Actually, pass that through to Gilmore. Gilmore's going to put that through to Ismail Asar. Ismail Asar can actually pass that into Gilmore, actually. And I tell you what, that was very, very high risk. But Gilmore keeps the ball. He's gone through to Calvert-Lewin. He's had a shot and he's hit it off the post and in. And oh my God, what a shot. A nice assist for Gilmore um, when he's not getting that many appearances. More of a you know, rotation player for us, obviously. But um, I tell you what, usually we've seen... I think we've probably seen once or twice Spurs beat us 4 or 5-1. Looks like it's Argo to dominate them. And against City, I think we won 5-1. Against Spurs, 4-1. This is going pretty well for us. A really nice finish from Calvert-Lewin off the post and in. And yeah, Spurs just haven't really been able to deal with us today. A few maybe scary moments before, but um, just the chemistry of the team has grown. And what a win this is looking like it will be. Seven goals in four games for Calvert-Lewin um, and more assists. So he is just really improving his game and just showing what a force he is. 
And that's going to be it, guys. 4-1 at home to Spurs. Dominating the team that for hit most of the season last year was top of the league. Um, would have actually been second season Mourinho. I mean, they're top of the league in real life now. Maybe this is a sign of things to come. But, um, yeah, absolute big result for us. As you can see, getting more of the shots. Possession, Spurs actually dominated. Um, same with the pass accuracy. But we were just a lot more clinical. And um, with that, let's see if we get any more offers for the transfer window. And um, I can't remember who our next game is against, but I think we're probably due um, a Carabao Cup game soon enough. Okay, guys, we are in transfer deadline day. We will see if we do get any more offers for anyone, as you can see. Oh, wait, Chelsea bought Rudiger in. Does that mean they re-bought him from Newcastle? That's a, a very interesting one. But if we go to us, as you can see, the business got to Ben Rama and Fredericks for Emerson and Torres. Some pretty much like for like replacements and um, it actually says we didn't get any money for selling them. that's because we included them in the deal but um yeah let's actually have a look and see what moves or requests we do get if any i actually think masuaki was requested to leave because we're not really playing him but um hopefully he doesn't leave in this little period because i really don't need to be looking to get a new left back now for the window it has closed what is this little offer for Lunin? what actually is it who's the swap deal with a left back not necessarily a bad left back, but um, no, 6 million plus that guy, um, I do not think so. I'm actually going to just block all offers for Lunin, to be honest. He is our goalkeeper. So I thought I'd actually try and go through some of the development plans for our players, guys. Loftus-Cheek, boosting up his weak foot would actually only take one week, so I'm definitely going to look to do that. You know, I should have maybe done this a bit before with some of my players. Um, let's have a look at Boga's um, development plan as well. I actually changed them stars as well to try and get his, I believe, skill moves up. I think it is, but Boga's only got the freestyle weak foot, so maybe we could try and boost that up as well. That's only going to take the one week as well. Our players really just flying on form and really picking up things very quickly. Um, Ferran Torres, I believe I already have him on a plan I think if I'm not mistaken oh no he's on balance as well um, I wonder what I could do because I could boost up his weak foot or his um yeah I think I will why not boost up the weak foot get all of these five star weak foot players or why not not going to complain about that but we'll leave that for now just um thought it'd be nice to let you guys in on what I'm actually playing to do as you can see a game up against Fulham next Okay, guys, game against Fulham next. Actually, just before our first Champions League game, which is against CSK Moscow. So that will be the last game of the episode. Looking at Fulham, they obviously bought Koch in defence. They've got Ben White as well. Wu Lei, a guy that caused us some issues when we faced Fulham. Usually away at Fulham, we don't actually do too well. I think maybe both the times we've been away against Fulham, we've actually got red cards. So um, let's hope to not keep that trend going. They've got Brewster up front, who I think... Is a new signing for them. Some players have always had Anguissa Robinson. So, um, yeah, should be a team that we should be able to be comfortably. Masuaku is getting a start just because, you know, he's a, he's a bit annoyed at the moment. So, and he asked to play. So, I thought, why not give him at least one game before we get into our Champions League ties? All right, guys, game against Fulham now. And that really nice black kit. I do really enjoy this West Ham black kit that I saw. It has the little um, symbols on it, which I'm not sure how good they look in real life. But on this game, I do quite like them as Calvert-Lewin breaks through, goes through to Ismail Asar who's actually through already, he's going to put that through to Calvert-Lewin and okay guys that is um, a pretty good start, I didn't think anyone was going to get there, I just sort of hoped and prayed when I fired that into the box from Saar and um, Calvert-Lewin was just there to run into it as his teammates celebrate with him, Masuaki there looking happy which is nice to see but what a way to start the game, Loftus-Cheek pulling some of the Fulham defenders away and maybe some poor goalkeeping as well. Should have maybe tried to pick that up. But eight goals now for Calvert-Lewin. And it doesn't really get much easier than that. As in Loftus Sheet cuts back in. Goes through to Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin pops it through to Suchek. And Suchek get another goal. He can, guys. Two goals in a row for Suchek. And, you know, I've, I've said this about him. I tried to... <laughs> I was trying to sell him. And I feel like he's not taking too well to that. And I was saying that he's bad. He scored... Two goals in two games for me now. The whole team is firing, to be fair. But maybe this is him trying to say that he does not 
want to be sold. And I'll tell you what, guys, honestly, let me know down below what you want me to do with Suchek. I mean, if you don't want me to sell him, please say, because I still feel like I want to. I want to make this as interesting and exciting a career mode as possible. But if you don't want me to keep him, please say, let me know if you want me to sell him as well, as I will listen to what you guys want in this series. But with that said, let's try and then keep this role going and maybe score some more. Emerson now through to Loftus Cheek. Loftus Cheek passes that into Calvert Lewin. Wasn't really what I wanted to do, but it's gone through to Suchek. Um, to Sar, sorry, not Suchek. I don't know what I'm on about. But he passes that into Ferran Torres. And that was actually a very sweaty goal by me. I feel kind of bad that um, I did that. But I'm actually finding this kind of easy. I don't know if you guys want me to maybe up the difficulty to ultimate now. Let me know down below if that's what you think. I should be doing. I mean, against Fulham, you'd probably expect this, maybe, but I mean, we have battered Spurs and um, City as well. So, do let me know if you guys want me to up the difficulty, or if you just think, you know, it's our run of form and um, we've got the players that we need to, you know, do these sorts of scores. So, you know, I want it to be as realistic as possible. Um, so, I guess we'll see how the final game of the episode pans out. But, and um, Bruce and the. Right, Loftus cheat now through to Calvert Lewin. Can Calvert Lewin put that through to Suchek? He can. Suchek to Ferran Torres. Ferran Torres, what can he do? Can he just shoot across goal? He actually can. And Ferran Torres has got his second goal of the game against Fulham. And what a signing he's proving to do. I think, to be fair, in comparison to Bogle, I think they're both similar, but Ferran Torres just seems to get into a little bit of better positions, I'd say. He seems to... You know, make maybe just a little bit better runs. I think Bogus maybe got more ability physically. But in terms of, um, yeah, finding himself in the right places, Ferran Torres has really been a very, very good player. Bogus near post. Can he prevent anything? And he can't. And Geese is there and it stops the clean sheet. And you know it's going to happen when you're battering a team this much, guys. The game just sort of, I think, turns to another gear. And it's like, right, if you give us an opportunity to score, it is going in the back of the net, which is a little bit of a shame, but I mean, 4-1 still can't really complain. Would be nice though to try and keep a clean sheet every now and again, but it was their captain getting the goal. I guess that's something for the Fulham fans to be somewhat happy about, But the... and that's going to be it. End of the game, guys, Fulham, you know what, a pretty good result because doing the Craven Cottage seems to be our bogey ground, and we seem to have, you know, pulled off a very nice win. I don't... God knows how many goals we've scored already in these, um, I believe, five games. Um, Fulham did come back a bit in the second half. We don't seem to be a very possession-based team. We definitely are a um, counter-attacking style. But, um, yeah, decent result, guys. Let's see how we do in our first game in the Champions League. The start of your Champions League campaign. How are you feeling? I think we'll have to see how we match up. We want to stay humble. We want to stay wary. But, guys, West Ham are in the Champions League. Who would have thought... Some fatigue in the camp after the win against Fulham. And you've got the CSK Moscow coming up. I trust all of our players. I think it's going to be a strong team that does start. We are actually away in Russia, so in real life that would affect us. And we definitely wouldn't have a game two days later, by the way. Look at this absolute rubbish we've got. We've got them on Wednesday. And I'll actually know, to be fair, that actually is something that does happen in football. Can't complain too much. But yeah, we'll have these this game next. And then it does look like the next episode... We have um, a double against Chelsea. Not too sure if I'll be playing the cup game, but we will see. So, yeah, that should prove to be interesting, as well as that visit to Juventus. So, a big episode coming up next time, guys. But we are in our first Champions League game against CSKA Moscow. Um, I think for our first Champions League game, we definitely have to try and um, put our full strength team out there, which is what I think we are going to do full strength team do i recognize any of these players they have christian fuchs i believe that is they have a fernandez on right wing but i'm assuming that's not one that i know akin Fieve is still playing i remember him still a goalkeeper that is absolutely crazy but i mean this is a game that we should win um i'm not too sure actually about the um kits probably do need to try and change that where actually are they change kit i think our away kit will be a bit more suitable in this game the first game in the Champions League, guys, and it's underway, and it'd be great to kick this off with a bang. We are obviously Europa League winners, so um, that is also an awesome thing to um, experience. If we could win both European competitions in a row, I think that was probably... Would that be a first winning the Europa League and in the Champions League straight after? I think it maybe would, 
Um, obviously, great success already for the club, winning the Premier League, winning the Europa League. Just great stuff for West Ham. I mean, as well, winning, you know, the Super Cup and Community Shield, despite not being massive competitions, um, it is still a very good thing. But this is the true test, guys. The Champions League against Europe's elite every single week. Um, that is going to be the true test of our team's calibre. And um, right now, Moscow are keeping the ball fairly well. But Suchek's there, and Suchek actually wins the ball fairly well. Loftus-Cheek now through to Calvert-Lewin, who is on his own. But can he get the ball through? He can't force it through that very compact midfield. And Declan Rice there makes a foul, and we're fouling a little bit. There's Group G. Piemonte Calcio. We've got to remember that Juventus are not actually in this build of the game. Hopefully eventually soon, but you'll, you'll think that Pez will buy the rights to someone else if um, they eventually run out of um, that, but we've managed to push them out now. Our ball, Emerson did well. Left Declan Rice over to Loftus-Cheek. Loftus-Cheek's going to put that into Suchek. Suchek's going to find the ball over to Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin's going to poke that through. Suchek's got the ball. He's going to drive forward with his power. Up to Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin's going to knock that through. To Saar. Saar's going to put that through to Thomas Suchek. And his third game in a row. Okay, you know what? You know what? Maybe, maybe I won't sell Suchek, guys. Okay, maybe I won't. If he's going to keep doing this now, it's, it's this is quite funny how this has worked. The mentality, isn't it? Like, I was thinking of selling him, and now he is actually, like, he is performing, scoring the goals, making the runs, and then whilst maybe wasn't the best finish ever, he still sticks it in the back of the net. Nice assist by Sara. First goal in the Champions League, probably ever. I don't know if West Ham have ever been in the Champions League before. I don't think they have. Um, so, yeah, history by Thomas Suchek, and maybe a reason why I should um, second-guess myself when I'm thinking of selling him. For the last act of the game, what a piece of play that was. And guys, this has not been easy. I do have to say, I thought this was going to be easier. We did manage to get the breakthrough goal with Suchek, but ever since then, it's been all CSK Moscow. As Spurs are winning their game away against the other Moscow, which is um, good for them. Both uh, one nils away at the moment. That I don't think would happen. I'm pretty sure they'd um, make it so one of us was playing at home. But um, either way, this is not proving to be easy. But unless the other second half goes. Oh, Rice gets caught out, and it's them against all of our defence. And, oh, Kabak has made a very interesting tackle, and that could be a red card. It's not luckily. It's a yellow. Over to Moscow. They're cutting on the inside again. Need to be very careful. They've passed that through, and they've scored in the 77th minute. And you know what? I couldn't do anything there. Diop is mad because we covered one of the runs, but we couldn't cover the other. And, oh, my God, what is this? They have absolutely um, roasted us with that celebration, guys. And, yeah, I tried to make the thing, but look, he gets away from his man. It was actually Suchek he got away from, but Suchek shouldn't have to be playing there anyway, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, that was not great. And um, one all, not the worst result if it does take place, but would have much preferred a win um, to cap off our first game in the Champions League. We need to be winning these sorts of games if we want to win the competition, that is for sure. But both, and I think that's going to be it, guys. Yep. One all away at CSK Moscow. Not the best way to cap off the episode. But, you know, an away draw in our first game ever in the Champions League. It's not the worst result. It was disappointing that we got a goal so early and um, couldn't capitalise. But that's going to be it, guys. The end of the episode. We did not sell Suchik. And maybe we won't. Do let me know in the comments below what you want me to do about that. If you want me to sell or buy anyone else, please let me know. Also, let me know in the comments below if I'm able to use these Champions League animations or if they are copyright if any of you guys know that would be appreciated but as always do leave a like and subscribe for more FIFA 21 content and i'll see you for the next episode